Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Any Making 3 and today I'm going to be giving you part 4 of what if Naruto was created from the Mokitan cells and all Kage DNAs. Remember to get this one too, 100 like as usual, share this to all of your friends on your social media platform and also guys if you're new and this is the first time hearing my voice, yes. I indeed have four more channels that equal up to five guys. Anime King, Anime King 2, Anime Symbol, and Anime Prince. All of the links will be down in the description, so go ahead, check them out, and yeah, enjoy. And don't forget to check out the brand new episode of What if Naruto had the adapting ability like Doomsday over an Anime Symbol? And enjoy that. So without further ado or wasting any more time, what do you say we jump right into this brand new episode? Begin now guys! the last part that we left off. Itachi was being blamed for the death of Shisui Uchiha despite him having nothing to do with Shisui's death. However, he could not reveal the truth. Gonzo has put him in a rather corrupted situation where he had to choose. He had to make a choice and he had to do it now. He had no other choice. However, Naruto arrived out of nowhere and started to violently attack him. Itachi stepped back as he clashed with Naruto. His Sharingan activated subconsciously as Naruto looked directly into his eyes, never looking away for one moment as they simply gazed at each other. Things were not pleasant as Naruto gripped him by the shirt and told him that he knew he would never kill Shisui. So he need to know what the hell is going on right now. Itachi thought about everything and thought about the outcome. Knowing that if he did not say something to Naruto he might draw more attention and he needed help. So Itachi decided to inform Naruto of everything that was going on. As Naruto told him that. He told him this in the past already. If you're backed against a goddamn wall. Blow the wall up. As Naruto told him to give him three days. Three days that was all that he needed. Skipping towards the office. Thunder strike as rain was pouring down. As Naruto appeared. Almost like he intended to assassinate Harrison but that was not the case. Naruto told that he needed to speak to him alone as Harrison told the Anvus to leave. Naruto spoke to the man. Hiruzen had no idea that it had gotten that far. As Naruto informed him that he had a plan. Naruto's plan will result in a death. That Hiruzen was just going to have to live with. There was no other way around it. Hiruzen thought about it as he thought about the outcome of the Uchiha clan. And those people all of them falling. And Itachi being the one to take the fall for it. He had no choice but to give Naruto the okay and to go ahead. A meeting was taking place and once again Itachi was not there. Many members were suspecting him of being a traitor to this clan. That is when Naruto arrived, shocking all of them as he just came out of nowhere. Naruto showed them that he was a force to be reckoned with. He nearly brought down the might of Kami upon them. Showing how much he has grown in the past couple of years, his strength was immaculate, godly, forcing them to subdue themselves other than going to war with him knowing the outcome. 
Luther told them that the Hokage was aware of this. They had one choice and only one choice. He will take care of the rest, but if they decide to make a move, he will end them all. The bloodlust that reeked from him show them that he was not messing around. Fukaku decided to put his trust in this boy. He was the only one amongst the group that knew who this was. Soon after that, Danzo arrived towards the meeting location as he was there to meet Itachi to hear that he was going to massacre the entire clan. He had two agents with him, two of his best, watching his back. However, things did not go as neither of them expected. The boat of their life were ending in a split second. They didn't even know who ended their life. As for Danzo, Itachi arrived as he waited. However, Itachi turned him down. Danzo wondered what the hell was going through his mind and what the hell was he thinking but when Naruto arrived on the scene, Danzo was taken aback. Hiroshin had gone through great lengths to keep Naruto a secret as he would be the secret that most people don't know about. Both Naruto and Itachi then tag team Danzo and beat the living crap out of him. As Naruto brought him towards the location where another meeting was scheduled, Right there and then, Naruto ended his life. Showing them that he made a deal as Naruto warned Fukaku. That if he did not squash all of this, he would be coming for him next and all of them who decide to raise their hands against his village. Surely, a few weeks after that, they were all able to calm their nerves and try to find a better alternative. As for the ninjas, Naruto apologized to Wolf, knowing that the commander wanted to make him take his place but unfortunately he had to move to another location. Wolf understand, however, he would believe that Naruto would make a fine leader. This is what he had bred him for, this is what he had prepared him for and now he was ready to face them. He was ready to control, he was ready to lead them. Yes, he was ready. So with that, Naruto approached. Naruto had the seal that Danzo had. As Naruto Fuinjutsu levels were elevated beyond normal, he spent years studying and working after all. Naruto brought this to their attention, that he could end each of their lives right now. However, instead of killing them, he wanted them to continue their work and not the work that Danzo gave them. Donzo believed that he was doing everything for the betterment of Kanoha, but he was actually doing this all for himself. He was a selfish man, and Naruto wanted them to follow him to make Kanoha great again, as they all bow and pledge allegiance to him. As Naruto had big goals, big aspiration for the entire Root organization, Harrison was a bit worried about the influx of power go into his head, but this is exactly what Wolf has been training him for. This position was just like the commander of Anvu. Now it was time to see what they have created over the past couple of years. So yeah guys, basically let's left off you guys can switch across the place to for yourself and also guys, don't forget to go ahead and smash that red subscribe button and become a part of the end making family and thank you for all of your help and your support. So without further ado or wasting more time, what do you say we leap right into this begin? Now guys, it was currently night time. She was gazing out towards the scenery as she stood there in the back of her yard as she waited, knowing that he would come tonight. She waited and waited. That is when she heard something as she turned to see him, appearing out of nowhere. She quickly approached. Standing there was none other than Naruto. Without his mask, the woman that approached was none other than Mikato Uchiha. She looked towards him with a desperate look on her face. It's over, said Naruto. Everything will be alright. The moment he said that, she enveloped him in a tight hug, wrapping her arms around him as he held her. She started to cry. They were tears of joy 
and happiness. Itachi, wonder who, had told Naruto about the whole thing, how he found out. Hiroson believed that it was Itachi that started and gave Naruto the information, but the both of them were unaware that it was none other than Mikato. She saw the way that things was going. She saw the eventuality of what will happen and she feared it. Itachi was struggling. She could see it in his eyes. She knew her son. He was struggling on what to do. And he was alone in this. He needed help. What she did could get her exile from her own clan. For revealing sensitive information. But she just didn't care anymore. All she wanted was for her family to be safe. And if that meant telling Ruto. Who she knew could help. She would do it over again a thousand times. Naruto was greatly respectful towards this woman. He saw her as a second mother, a person that was there for him in the most difficultest of times, who sat with him and talked to him and helped him. That is why he had made sure to warn Itachi that if that stupid thought ever come in his mind again about ever going after his own mother, he would kill him himself. As much as he was great friends with Itachi, when he lost, everything she was able to put him back together show him that he was still here and his sister was still here as well so he would never allow itachi to strike this woman down mikato parted from him as she was so happy she knew that getting ruta involved would make a big difference she knew that he would not allow what the future or the outcome that her husband predicted would happen thank you she said to him she had a smile on her face you know i wouldn't let anything happen to you said naruto things are still a bit shaky right now however in due time they will start themselves out we just have to wait she nodded towards him as they heard something she turned and it was sasuke uchiha that came outside when she turned back, Naruto was gone. Mom? What are you doing out here, Sasuke said, rubbing his eyes. Oh, it's nothing, sweetie, she said. Let's get you back to bed. I wanted a glass of water, he said. All right then, come on, she said. As she gazed out, she had a smile on her face, thanking Naruto once again in her mind. Time skip. A few years later, a man was seated inside of a room waiting on the next person to arrive behind him was two of his guards as he sat there he was standing at five foot nine he had dark spiky hair small beady eyes he was dressed in a very expensive blue suit dark blue as he waited to discuss business this man name was kaido there were several influential people that were all around the elemental nation people that dabble in crime drugs trafficking and several other misdeeds that has made them very wanted by the public eye this man kaido was one of them in fact he was the number one there were several others including gato who was a well-known public eye view but in the shadows, he was a man of darkness as well. Kaido was number one though. His company was thriving in the shadows. Kaido was not pleased though. He hated to be kept waiting as he kept on tapping his finger on the decks. Ahead of him was two others. They were clad in masks. Their face covered up as he waited. Finally, one of them made a move as they opened the door. Upon doing so, someone entered in the room. His once blonde hair mostly comprised of blended white. More along the line of silver, but you just had to get it in the right lighting. As he calmly made his way, his red eyes focused on the man. He pulled a chair as he proceeded to sit down. He seemed calm, unusually so. My apologies for keeping you waiting. Something came up. 
You could have at least sent someone to tell me that. Well, it is gone now. So let us proceed right to business then. Fine, Kaido said. I gave your man my proposal. I presume we're here to finalize everything that you were able to see on the written contract. Yes, most of it. Naruto spoke up. As he pulled out a file and flipped it open. Most of it, Kaido said. What do you mean by that? For me allowing you to make your operational fully global. You will cut me in for 20%. You know, this is just a formality, said Kaido. After all, I'm only doing this so that I can run things peacefully. I could have done it with or without your help. So I think 20% is more than fair, he said. After all, your part is not that big that you will be playing. So, why don't we get this underway? Kaido said looking towards Naruto, who has grown a lot. As he simply sat there. His gaze was still looking down towards the file though. Kaido was wondering what was going on. What was the problem? As his gaze looked towards the man in front of him. Unfortunately, I can't agree with this. Naruto said sliding the paper back over to him. If you would take a look you can see. My change is that. I now need. What? Kaido said picking up the file as he opened it. When he opened, he looked up. Are you mad, he said, getting out of his seat. You know, you're not the first to say that. You see, Kaido, I'm not here to make a deal with you. The moment Naruto said that, Kaido guards reached for their weapons. Your whole process is shady, and I don't take to it that well. The whole children process. I like to keep kids out of my dealings, and you seem to have a vested interest in getting them involved, and I don't like that. However, the rest of your work, as bad as it might be seen, it is greatly profitable. So, I think I might make a change for the leadership of your organization. Kaido banged his fist on the table in rage. Who the hell do you think you are? Your people reach out to me and now you think that you can take my operation. You know who I am and yet you still believe there is a chance that I will let this stand Kaido said. Naruto raised his arm as there was three knocks on the door. Another root agent entered inside before. He took the duffel bag that he was wearing off as he opened and dumped the contents on the table. Kaido backed away in fear. Five heads fell down toward the table, a horrified look edge on their faces. These men are your commander. These were the ones that decided to retaliate once I was cleaning through your operation. Oh, I forgot to inform you. That was the reason I was late. And you think, I chose you because I wanted to make a deal. I chose you because I know. The moment I gave you this go ahead, you will believe that it will give you a big boost in your economy so you will leave yourself wide open, allowing me to infest your organization. And now, as you can see, all your loyalists have been removed. A few others are not here. I figure I'll only bring the important people. Kaido clenched his fists. You won't get away with this, he yelled. As I said to you before. The whole children thing, I don't like that that much. But the rest of the work, as dark as it is, it is useful and also profitable. And the reason why you're here is not to make a deal as you can see by now. You're here for your execution. The two guards quickly pull their weapon fully until two root ninjas appear out of the room, shocking them as they split their throat clean open. Kaido's legs were knocked away as he fell to his knees. The root ninja placed in a kunai at his throat. He looked up towards Naruto with defiance and rage in his eyes. You won't get away with this. I'll find a way to make you suffer. Now how would that be possible when you're dead? The moment Naruto said that the root ninja 
split Kaido's throat clean open. You know what to do, said Naruto. With that, he was gone. The next moment, the entire place was set ablaze. Time skip. Naruto stood in front of a door. As there were several sleeping children on each of the beds inside, a root ninja dropped and bowed to him before he got to his feet. Sir, after testing, these ones, parentage has fallen out. I see. Bring them along, said Naruto. It's better then, leaving them here to rot. They will serve along with us. Yes, sir. The root ninja vanished soon after that. As Naruto proceeded to make his way. A lot has happened in the past couple of years. Since Naruto had took a vested interest in saving the Uchiha clan and taking over Donzo operation. A lot has happened in the past few years. For one, Mito had been placed in the academy when she reached the age of 7 years old. And Naruto was the one to accompany her. It was a shocking scene for most as they saw him after all. To their knowledge, he was supposed to be dead. Rumors started to circulate, saying that he was being targeted, him along with his sister, so the both of them were kept away from the public eye in order to be prepared for what is to come. After all, they are the children of Minato Namikaze and the Red Hot Habanero, the both of them having their respective enemies and Minato having a great deal more than Kushina. So yes, many people were satisfied by that answer. They were just glad to know that the legacy of their Hokage did not completely die out. So Mito was placed in the academy. The knowledge about the Kyube was a bit shady. Most did not know the truth as there were many things floating around. However, the younger generation did not know about that. A lot of them were obsessed with the young girl. After all, she was the daughter of the Fort Akage. Despite him being gone now, she was basically a celebrity. Mito made friends fast. Her personality was one that was given and welcomed to all. So yes, her childhood was something that she was able to enjoy. Naruto made sure of that. The moment that she was reintroduced to the populace, many tried to come after her. However, they did not even make it into the border of the land of fire. They were all tortured for information and then promptly executed. Since taking over Donzo operation, the operation has grown. Naruto had a rule. A rule against harming kids and also abandoning kids. He had his agents try to find them back their home. However, leaving them in an orphanage was something that he didn't allow. He brought them back to the village for them to be trained to join his operation. Naruto had started the re-education program to train the root ninjas to re-educate them. Since Donzo had been set in motion, Donzo had allowed countless of his root ninjas to die because of their rule to not focus on their friends or partners on a mission. Just the mission, even if there is a slight chance that they can save their allies, they would not. Because the mission come first, yes it does, but their mind was so programmed to do one thing that there was no other room to do anything else. So Naruto had made sure that he started the re-education program. Some of them did not work out so good. Donzo had truly broken most of them. However, they were still loyal, still willing to die and sacrifice their life for this village. But since Naruto took over, there has only been 5 casualties in the past couple of years. Only 5. And looking back at Donzo's track record, there has been countless 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 of deaths so yes naruto would give this an improvement however naruto now understood certain things that donzo had to keep away from hirazen if certain things that he did came to the light majority of the citizens would see him as shady and dark for doing so and one of those people would be his sister she loved her big brother with all of her might but he didn't want 
hard to see the darkness that he had in the shadows. So yes, Naruto kept things away, even from the Hokage himself. Certain dealings, certain programs, certain movement. Even now, his men had found a select candidate that Naruto had screened to take over Kaido situation. They no longer go after kids but the other operations were just as deadly and also cruel as well. However, Naruto was monitoring it but he was also bringing in a massive large amount of income as well. So yes, for the betterment of the organization and for the betterment of the Hidden Leaf Village as well, Naruto since taking over has also got the names of all the spies in the other nation. So at the moment he had a graph detail on the other nations and the villages. There was so much that Donzo had control over. So so much. And Naruto was now fully aware of all of them. But he now knew. Now that he was seen in the spotlight. There were certain past enemies that were going to try to make a move against him. Orochimaru was one of them. And that masked man was also on the list as well. However, this wasn't a few years ago where he feared the outcome of a battle between either of them. A lot has changed. Nut has learned a lot about himself and made several shocking discoveries about himself and the people around him as well. Nut got up as he realized that he had to go. He had a meeting to attend. Time skip. It was nighttime as Heroes and Sir Toby was currently residing in his office. There was a few paperwork in front of him with a few students' names. As he was still mapping out the graduations and the teams that he was setting in place. When Ruta arrived in said office, Harrison glanced up towards him. The boy has truly grown in the past couple of years. So much has changed as well. However, the move that he made all those years ago turned out to be the right one. Itachi Uchiha had retired from the organization Anvu. He had taken the place, the role of his father. His father had not fully stepped down but he was leading. He was leading the police force while Itachi was stepping into the spotlight as the clan head. There had to be some changes. After their failed attempt which they came to the realization that it was better for them to stick by Konoha than make a move. Hiruzen had forgiven them for their actions of even thinking of a coup. However, after several discussions with Fukaku, it was best that he step down now and hand the reins over to someone that was looking forward for a better and brighter future. A few of the older members, they believed that it was not wise to give the reins over to Itachi. However, like past generation, they did things like the past. After all, the Uchiha's favor strength out of most. Strength, show respect, and Itachi mopped the floor with every single one of them. And the respect came soon after. Big changes went on within the clan. Itachi saw the downfall of the clan for a long time now. Believing that they were greater or better than everyone else just because of the eyes that they possess. Focusing on just their Sharingan. Believing that that made them unlimited or great beyond expectations or reality somehow. But all of that took a quick change when Itachi took over and started to change up everything from the inside out. One of the other steps was Itachi. Taking a step on the council. Not to mention Naruto also taking a step on the council as well. The Uchiha clan already had their huge beneficial growth for the village. However, Naruto also had something to offer as well. After his unveiling of the new entire weapon system of Kanoha. But not only that, the inside and workings of the Fuinjutsu barrier that reside over the village. His knowledge on Fuinjutsu that he excelled in, surpassing even his father to greater extent. Well, it was a no-brainer if it was wise to place him on the council or not. So yes, he was given a seat 
in internal village affairs. At the moment, Ruta handed a few paper to Harrison, something for him to sign off on. Harrison nodded as Naruta proceeded to take a seat. I got what I told you about, said Naruta as he placed the file down below. Harrison took the file as he gazed towards Naruto. And this are his true feats, Harrison asked. Naruta nodded. Harrison looked at the file of the boy. He was 14 years old, unlike many of the other groups that they were going to be farming. There were several things that this group had to offer and several reasons why they needed the extra protection. Kakashi himself was a well-known ninja, yes. However, Sasuke Uchiha was the son of the head of the police force and the brother of the clan leader. And Mito Namikaze was a daughter of the fourth Okage. Not to mention she was also a Jinjuliki and also her unknown brother. So that is why Naruto gave Hiruzen the proper candy to take the third place spot. A lot has changed for the academy wise. Usually they venture on the top boy and the top girl in the class. With the dead last of the class, however, Mito was the top girl. Sasuke was the top boy. And this unknown would serve to be a perfect blend. His name was Sai. As Hiruzen looked over all what Naruto had listed of the boy performance. The boy had been specially trained to carry out on this mission. Not to mention, he would have been able to safeguard the others. Just in case Kakashi would be delayed, many would think that he was just an average genin. Hiruzen understood that, as he agreed. Time skip. Sai was looking towards his adoptive brother figure. His name was Shin. Sai would have to kill Shin if Naruto hadn't taken over. That was Donzo testing for them. Shin had a rather horrendous disease that affected his lungs and was slowly killing him from the inside. Donzo could have put in more effort to try and help the boy but he saw Sai mental growth as something else he wanted to focus on. However, because of Naruto, Shin was alive and he was now one of Naruto's personal guards. Shin's views on things was similar to Naruto on how he saw the world and what he saw they had to do to ensure the growth and the protection of the village as they know as a whole. However, Sai was a bit nervous. Sai retained certain emotion aspects, a lot of it to be quite exact, as he was... Not sure how it would play out for him stepping into the light and making actual friends. Because this was not just an assignment. He was told to get to know them, to bond with them and become a true member of the team. However, like usual, Shin always made him feel happy in just a few moments as he placed a hand on his head. Come on now, there's nothing to worry about, he said, looking down towards Sai. You're one of the more prepared people I know, and I know you already think about this a lot, but trust me, it isn't that hard to think about. All you have to do is to trust yourself. But this girl, she's a sister of our leader. What if I... It's gonna be our right side. I've seen her. I've also spoken to her. Trust me, you two will get along just great. Sai nodded as he decided to trust what he was saying. Time skip. In the upper district of Kanoha, near to the clan ear side, there was a sizable house. It had a few bedrooms, a few bathrooms, big enough to serve for a good home for the people that reside inside of this location. Currently, in the backyard, there was a red hair girl. She had short, straight red hair. She was going through hand signs slowly as she placed her hand down. On the stroll that was in front of her. Suddenly, the Fuinjutsu matrix seemed to activate. There, I'm done, she said. Across from her was another red hair girl, but her hair was spiky, with two bangs coming down the side of her face. All right, the spiky hair girl said as she held out her hand. She started to focus. Slowly, you could hear the sound 
of something twisting and turning before the blue ball of energy started to rotate in her hand. This was the prize technique of Minato Namikaze, the Rasengan. She slowly approached the ceiling scroll before she placed the Rasengan inside of it. Slowly, the scroll absorbed the seal. It was then finished. Now, Karen, the spy carried here girl said, as one now identified as Karen with her short, smooth red hair quickly went through another set of hand sign as she sealed the technique inside. Once that was done, the both of them focused on the scroll, waiting to see if it would fail. As they saw that it still remained, Mito, we did it. Karen said. We did. Both of the girls jumped up in excitement and cheered at their huge step forward. The both of them were similar in age. Mito was 13, Karen was 14. They finally accomplished it. There were several other scrolls. Either they were ripped or burned or torn. As they were over to the side, she finally got the ceiling complex down. So, let's try it. Mito said. Yeah, said Karen as she picked up the scroll. She gazed around as she pointed toward the tree. Alright. She proceeded to go through another set of hand signs as she make. The secondary seal activate over the overlay of the scroll, causing it to shrink on itself until it was in her palm as she held on to it. Alright. Ready? Now, as she threw it and activated it at the same time. However, the scroll was eviscerated from the inside as a Rasengan came out. However, it did not go as they expected. It fell to the ground and ripped the ground apart, tearing up the earth before it dissipated. Damn it. It wasn't stable enough, Karin said looking quite upset. Don't worry. We'll find a way to stabilize it. You think we should ask for help? Karin asks. No, not yet, said Mito. When we're further, we'll tell them, okay? After all, it's a surprise. Karen nodded at that. And what exactly is a surprise? A voice said, causing the both of them to spin around. Standing there was none other than Ruto. Before he could say anything else, Mito ran forward. Big brother, she said, crashing right into him. As Ruto held her, he smiled towards her. His demeanor was calm and relaxed. Well, you two seem to be quite busy. Hi, Naruto, Karen said with a smile. Hi, Karen, said Naruto as he walked over. Mito, jumping down. As Naruto looked up towards the torn up ground, Karen looked towards Mito. As Mito looked towards her, we're working on something. But we can't tell you what it is, Karen said. Really now? And why is that? Because it's a secret, okay? Alright, I trust you two, said Naruto. Just don't do anything too dangerous, alright? We promise, the both of them said. Big brother, now that you're here, are you going to be attending tomorrow? Mito said looking towards him. She knew that he was busy a lot these days. Sometime he wasn't here. As Naruto turned towards her, you know, I would never miss your graduation for anything in this world. That brought a happy smile to her face. As he looked around, Where's Reina? he said. She's inside, said Karin. Alright, you two, said Naruto. Keep safe, as he made his way inside. See, said Mito. I told you that he would be alright about it. But we didn't exactly tell him what we were doing. You know, I kind of think that he already does know. What we're doing on some degree. Karen said looking towards Mito. Why would you say that? Well, um, she pointed towards the scrolls. That's not a giveaway, said Mito. Let's just get back to work until dinner time, okay? Karen nodded as both of them made their way off. Newton made his way inside as he took off his sandals. And walked inside. As he made his way, he smelled something delicious. He had told them that he would be coming in today. He had been busy a lot, and he noticed that. 
as Newton made his way to the kitchen, when she turned and gazed upon him, she was stunning. She had long, wavy red hair like her sister. However, her hair was much darker in color. Her name was Reina Uzumaki, like Karen Uzumaki. It was a long story how he came across her. The land of grass was going up against the land of trees. The both of them were so close to each other that it ended up bringing a conflict about their borders. Despite being so similar, they both want to govern over the land that their opponents rule. So that started a war between them. And given their proximity towards the land of fire, Naruto decided to find a way to squash this whole thing. When he sent his men out there to investigate, they came back with some startling news. Naruto thought that Mito was the last Uzumaki, but it turns out that he was wrong. Naruto had took a little trip himself. On that same night, Reina decided to run with her sister. Reina was a few years older than Karin. Things became bad when their mother was killed. Because of the war, they excessively came for their chakra. They were all born with a special ability that could heal a fighter wounds after taking her chakra by a bite. Their mother had sacrificed her body and health in order to keep them safe. The Land of Grass members wanted to restart the Uzumaki clan within the village. However, Reina was always doing something to sabotage that. When the night came as her mother told her that she could feel it coming. She told her not to grieve now. She told her to run. To take Karen and run. She would only slow them down. Her mother begged her she didn't want this for them. So she did. What her mother begged her to do. She ran with Karen however. They were caught. Yes they were captured. They didn't get away. She played her life to them and told them that she will not try to fight. She will do whatever they say. She will allow them to begin the breathing program with her as long as they didn't harm Karen. She will do whatever they ask. They took to her words as long as she didn't fight back. Karen was safe. With a heavy heart, she proceeded to move towards their location. However, before anything happened on that night, a mass murdering happened in the land of grass. Every single member that was involved with her mother demise and their capturing was slaughtered. They dropped like flies. They were exterminated, eviscerated. Karen had came rushing towards her aid, finding her inside the room dressed in a see-through gown. She was shocked. When she saw Karen rush inside, Karen told her that she was safe. She was saved by a man. That is when the door opened up as she saw him for the first time. A lot has happened since then. They were brought to Kanoha. They were brief. They were able to meet the Hokage. Naruto took full, full responsibility of them both. He even made sure that the home was comfortable. For all of them to live. Mito got a new family member. As she saw Karen as her sister. Despite having no blood relation only by the family name. She saw the both of them as her big sister. She was so happy. Nuta had been busy a lot lately. And he hated to leave her alone. Despite having a lot of friends in the village. At home she would be lonely. So he made sure to have that change. As the both of them moved in, it took some time for them to get used to the village and used to the fact that they would not be harmed and no one was trying to use them here. In fact, Naruto was protecting them. Both Reina and Karen excel in the art of Funjutsu. There was no doubt about it. Uzumaki stuck to the art far faster. Naruto was a special case entirely. However, Naruto was the one that started the program which 
was now running big time. Karen did not go to the academy because she ventured in a different area. Yes, she was one of the top students in the Fuinjutsu classes that was taught by Reina and a few others that were taught by Reina as well and shared. Kanoha Fuinjutsu program was never really elite, but now that has changed. Because of Naruto involvement, their weapons had gotten far, far more stronger. Their defense and everything. The Uzumakis were bringing a great change and a huge plus to the land of fire. It was recently that Naruto had a meeting with the Daimyo as well for the security and weapon mechanism. Because Naruto Fuinjutsu turn ordinary weapons into something extraordinary. Yes, something that he was extremely proud of. As of this moment, there wasn't a single person in the elemental nation that could best him in the art of Fuinjutsu. And he's shown that on multiple occasions. As of this time, Karin was excelling in the art of Fuinjutsu. Rin on the other hand, she was a lot. She was great in Fuinjutsu. She was great in hand-to-hand -hand combat. She wasn't that great with weapons, but in hand-to-hand -hand combat, she was like a genius. Her mind was able to predict and read people's movements because of their body language. Yes, she was an expert at that. She was a very smart girl. Not to mention Naruto had tasted a lot of delicacies. And she was the greatest cook in the entire world. And he was not exaggerating about that. If they were ever to open a restaurant or something, they would make billions. Because he had no doubt that the people would easily become addicted to her food. However, she was a part of a bigger picture right now. She was leading. She was leading the program of Fuinjutsu. Day by day, week by week, month by month, several other students start to get interested in the art. As they start to fluctuate over towards the classes, Kanoha was making a big turn and a great improvement. Recently, they got two Hayuga members who was interested in the art. Now that was a frightening shock. Given that the Hayugas mostly stick to their one trait, it was a surprise. Ruta had sat down and have a conversation with Hayashi Hayuga. The man also spoke to him on a deep, personal matter that Naruto was currently working on something for him. At the moment though, as Naruto walked inside, it seems like you're making a feast, he said towards her. Reina looked towards him, really. Given how you and those two out there eat, do you really think that this will last? Naruto chuckled. I suppose you're right, he said. Naruto knew how to separate himself from the work that he did and the life that he lived. So, how was your day? Reina asks. On a scale of 1 to 10, I would say a 7, said Naruto. What about you? Well, I had a breakthrough with a few of my students today, especially Kijiro Hayuga. He's really excelling in the art. It was a good thing that you spoke to his clan head to allow him to progress down this area as well. He's a real prodigy in the art. Maybe, most of them are, but the Hayugas you already know. Yes, I do, said Naruto. Throughout their conversation, they were inching closer and closer to one another. Reina glanced over Naruto's shoulder. She could tell where the girls were. She moved towards Naruto before anything else could be said. He wrapped his arms around her and picked her up as she wrapped her legs around his waist. Their mouth and tongues intertwined, sharing a passionate, crazy kiss. Before they broke apart, this was new actually. It started about a few months ago. At first, Naruto was always busy. He did not focus on a romantic relationship type. Rain on the other hand, she kept her mind focused on what she was doing and making sure the girls were safe and training and teaching her students. However, one night Naruto returned home after a rather difficult day. He was pretty stressed out. There were a few things that he could not 
a few things that he has not ever told her about, but she understand given what he did. However, on that night, something just clicked between them, something that was already there and they never seemed to focus on it. When their lips first intertwined, it seemed to be natural. However, neither of them had informed the girls about what was going on. Yes, they had kept it to themselves for some reason. Maybe it was because of the upcoming graduation, the whole system that they had to deal with. There was a lot going on. So they had not really gone around making anything public or anything. Reina had made friends, great friends within the village, the Uchiha clan and several others as well. Not to mention, because of the close relationship that Naruto shared with Itachi as his best friend, she had also made a best friend inside of the Uchiha clan. Someone that was a part of their little hangout group. So yes, Reina detached herself from Naruto as she looked at him with a smile on her face. From day one, she saw him as her savior, but that seemed to turn into admiring and then feelings. I think we should tell the girls. Once the graduation is over with, Nuta said, It's like you're reading my mind, said Reina. I was going to say that to you. We've kept this away from them long enough. I have no idea why we were even keeping it away. Me either, said Naruto. It's not like we're gonna make it public for everyone. But they, their family. Exactly, said Reina. At first she thought that it might seem weird. However, the family tie was not by that, it was just the name. But Mito did see the both of them as sisters. So this would just make it official, in a way. Why don't you go and tell them to wash up? I'm almost done here, she said. By the way, do you know what they're working on, Reina said. I felt the growing. Chakra outside on multiple occasions now. It's not anything too dangerous. Because they have been hiding it away from us. Don't worry, said Naruto. They're working on something, but it's not that dangerous. And I must say, what they're doing is rather interested. They could actually revolutionize how civilians handle the outside world really well with a little help when they need it they will ask for it said naruto well then i can't wait to see it now said reina as naruto nodded as he went to go and call the girls time skip he was sitting gazing out towards the scenery in front of him a lot has happened in the past couple of years. He was sure that he had stabbed and destroyed the boy's heart. However, somehow he lived. That just did not seem possible. All this time they have been hiding him away. They knew. They now knew that he was after him. So, in their best interest, they thought that hiding him away was a good idea. But now he's returned. They perhaps believe that he was strong enough to defend himself from any external threat that was coming his way. However, if he got in the way of the Nine Tail Retrieval, he will crush him. Just like what he did all those years ago. Time skip. Orochimaru was trying to piece things together. Donzo was gone. Naruto had been in the shadows for some time now. However, he was not quite sure if his theory was correct. But if it was, this could turn out to be something beneficial for him or something disastrous. He thought that his greatest creation had been killed. But now, to find out that it was a lie, Orochimaru has been plotting for the past few years. Unfortunately though, Konoha's security had gotten so tight that him slipping into the village, it was becoming difficult. That is why he had a spy in there gathering information but that didn't matter because there was nothing they could find on this boy. Absolutely nothing. 
It was like he didn't even exist, despite being right there. However, Orochimaru will have his time. And he will get back possession of what belongs to him. And anyone that stand in his way, he will cut them down. That boy perhaps have reached his full potential. What he had been desiring and hoping for, he would like to see how much stronger he has gotten. He would like to see what he was at the moment. The Sanin was truly excited to see what his creation turned out to be. After all, he built him to be the perfect vessel for him that surpassed any other clan. Even the Uchiyas with their great eyes, that body would be the perfect notion of war to face off against all of his foes and wipe out the Akaske who was chasing him for his misdeeds in their organization. Yes, very very soon, the Sanin thought to himself, time skip, both Naruto and Itachi were walking on the road. As they were making their way, several girls around their age and some beyond were looking at them. The both of them were extremely good looking so that was not a surprise. A lot has happened. In their friendship a lot has happened. How much the both of them has grown. How much the both of them now had on their shoulders. The responsibility. The future of this village. As of this moment they were heading towards the academy, the others were probably already there to congratulate the graduates. As the both of them were calmly making their way, discussing some mundane things. Itachi, Naruto, the both of them glanced as they saw Aizumi Uchiha as she made her way up towards the group with a smile on her face. I'm guessing that you guys are off to see the new graduates. She said with a smile, she had been Itachi's childhood friend and that friendship has grown and blossomed into something else. Meanwhile that was going on, Mito was pumped as she watched children after children return with their head bang. When her name was called, she smirked, good luck Mito. Two of her friends, Sakura and Ino said to her, all she did was give them a confident smile as she quickly rushed off. Few of them glancing towards her. When she arrived towards the room she saw Mizuki and there was also Aruka as well. The both of them were standing there. Alright Mito, Aruka said with a smile. Now is your chance to prove to us that you're ready for the step up. You got it Sensei, she said. Just tell me what you need. Alright, he said. First, perform the clone jutsu. She brought her hand up. Shut the clone jutsu, she said. Poof. That is not what Aruka asked for. You are to do the clone jutsu, not the shut the clone jutsu. Mizuki said. He did not sound too pleased about that. But I have too much chakra, she said. So I can't really. He's right, Mito, Aruka said. That is not what I asked for. This is far better, Aruka said, cheering her right back up as he looked towards the girl. The clone jutsu is simply an illusion, a fake, but this, it's a physical form that has taken place by your chakra and this is vastly more impressive than what I asked you to do. So that's a tick from me, he said as he ticked in the book. And now, I want you to perform the transformation jutsu. She brought her hand together. Transform. She turned into a perfect copy of her brother. Not a hero out of place. Aruka tick in his book. Congratulations Mito, he said. From here on out, you are a shinobi of the hidden leaf. Come and take your head, man. Mito was ecstatic. Aruka was proud of her. She was one of his best students. Many would let the popularity go to their head because of their family and parents. However, this girl works hard. He saw her, day after day most times training, getting the work done, and it had paid off tremendously. 
he knew that she was one of his more gifted students, similar to Sasuke Uchiha as well. He could tell majority of his students will go far but these two, these two are very special cases, there was no doubt about that. On the other hand, Mizuki was not sharing any of these thoughts. In fact, Mizuki was planning to kidnap Mito. Yes, you heard that right. He was planning to kidnap the sister of one of the most dangerous person in Kanoha at the moment. It was his job. And the person that he got that job from was none other than the son in Orochimaru. Orochimaru had to find a way to get Naruto to come to him. Yes. And he thought it was a good idea to release one of his pawns to do so. Orochimaru did not care much for Mizuki. Nor was he going to live to his promise and give him the power that he seek and make him his right hand man. He just wanted to see if he can do it. If he fail, well, good riddance. If he did it, well, that was better for him. Because he would not die right away. However, Mizuki, he had wanted her to fail. That would be a better chance of kidnapping her, but... Maybe there was another way to do this. In his bright idea, in his wonderful mind that he believed that was so strategic, he was going to try to take her away from this village. And he was not alone. But guys, be in subscribe right here. If you want to see next person do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification to stay posted. Remember, share all of your friends in social media platform. And also, guys, don't forget to go ahead and smash that red subscribe button and become a part of the end making family. And thank you for all of your help and your support. So, without further ado, you are wasting any more time. What do you say we jump right into this brand new episode? Begin, what am I saying? Let's get the hell out of here. See you guys soon. Peace.